I'm Rick Sellens, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about the visual setup of your studio to get the right things that you want on video. Because you're probably going to want to put your computer in a position so that it's not looking up your nose while you're working on it. Most laptops have the camera down there somewhere, lower than your face, and they wind up giving a not very flattering and not very professional looking picture. So first thing is, think about getting a separate keyboard and mouse. Once you've got that separate keyboard and mouse, you can put your computer up on top of something. I've got a little stand here, and you can adjust so that your view is at eye level, and you'll have a much better impression when you're delivering material to the students. Now, arrange your computer as if it's your favorite lecture room. Uh, my favorite lecture room is Walter Light Auditorium. I love it. It's got a whole lot of blackboards. They're all big enough to write big, long Navier-Stokes equations on. They're all across the front of the room, so I can fill up a whole lot of different blackboards, and move back and forth to each blackboard, uh, pointing out things over here that relate to things that are over there. So the other thing I love about Walter Light, the projection works without obstructing the blackboards. So I can be showing a picture up there at the same time that I'm talking on a blackboard over here and referring to something that we developed 20 minutes earlier in the lecture over here. It's a fantastic room. And it's easy to move from one visual to another without losing the thread of your lecture. So the way I do that on a computer is I use multiple virtual screens to reduce the need for sharing and unsharing different application windows. For example, I've shared the entire screen for this presentation. If I wanted to move over and show something other than my keynote slides, then I can go simply to another virtual desktop. In this case, let's try starting the Arduino IDE. Now, I was still working on the keyboard and trackpad of my computer up on a stand. That's really awkward. So now I'm going to bring in my Bluetooth keyboard and my Bluetooth mouse, which should allow me. There we go. The mouse works. I hope the keyboard's going to work for me. Uh, should allow me to interact with this display up while my keyboard is down in a comfortable position. Now, if I was in a lecture hall, it takes quite a while for the Arduino IDE to start up and get everything going. And that is a potential problem, but I usually will fill the time just by talking about something random until things are up. So that the students think something's happening. All of that is dead air time that we can cut out later. So that's an advantage. So I've got my Arduino IDE window that I'm going to write a sketch in. And later on, I'm also going to have a serial monitor that I'll need to bring up. But I'll need to connect an Arduino first. So just as if I was in my lecture, there. <clears throat> just imagine I was digging around in my backpack in the middle of Walter Light Hall, trying to find the right thing. And it was slowing down the lecture. And it usually would be. Oops, and I've got the wrong cable there. I need a different cable. There's the right cable. Plug that in. And now I should be able to bring up that serial monitor. And sure enough, there's a bunch of stuff happening there. Increase the font size on both of these so that it's big enough that I can see it in the video and, and, and get a better sense of what's going on. All of this is stuff that should happen before you even start your synchronous meeting with the students. This thing could have been running when I started up on the coach. Getting things prepared in advance will give you a better presentation and will reduce the amount of time on the video, allowing you to get down to that roughly seven minutes for an asynchronous uh, communication that you'd like to have to maintain student interest. That's another instance where you've got a whole lot of opportunities to speed things up when we go to an asynchronous demonstration. Let's go back to the keynote presentation. 
So absolutely critical. Set all these windows up in advance, just as you would before you actually started your lecture if you were giving an in-person lecture in a lecture room. Now, you also need to pick out and prepare a studio space. Ideally, pick a single location to optimize the results for that particular location with the least amount of effort. When I record in multiple locations, I find the different lighting settings and different arrangements work better in the different locations because of the different hardware and the window locations and the acoustics. All of that's really hard to remember. So pick a single spot if you can and stick with it and do your best to get a good quality result from that space. Natural light works up, works really well. Back it up with some artificial light for evenings and for the fact that we'll be giving lectures in November. Try to find a non-embarrassing visual and acoustic background. So try to get away from noise if you can. You may have heard a little traffic noise and some birds coming in the window. Try to get away from having your presentation, have your kitchen in the background. Make sure you've got adequate desk space to support things that are going to have to go beside your lecturing computer to help you make your presentations. Things like this little Arduino, things like my microphone that's right here that I'm going to be using. It's just off camera right now. Uh, if I'm going to be capturing some paper input or I've got a document camera over here, you'll need space for that. Make sure you've got adequate connectivity. If you don't have adequate connectivity at home already, maybe the Dean's uh, Fund can help support a home upgrade, or maybe you need to find a way to safely set up on campus where you've got adequate connectivity. But nothing is gonna ruin your presentation to students faster than bad connectivity that leads to garbled sound and chunky video that just doesn't work well. And finally, Clean and tidy your physical desktop and background to reduce distractions to you as you're delivering your lecture material. So we've picked a computer, we've picked a studio space, we're starting to get it ready. Test and optimize your remote studio. Uh, you'll need to do your own testing to make sure you can get good audio and visual results in recording of a Zoom meeting. And there's a bunch of things to keep in mind. One of them is, if you wear glasses like I do, there are gonna be reflections in your glasses of whatever light is out there. So think about how that's gonna look. Test it out by making some recordings. Get the camera at eye level. Raise your laptop and use a separate keyboard and mouse. Get the lighting, including the screen brightness, right. And keep in mind that it's gonna vary depending on the time of day and the weather that's out there and all of that. So for example, if I scroll my screen brightness up all the way, this is what you get. And you can see the screen reflected in my glasses. If I tone the screen brightness down, it makes it harder for me to see what's going on on my screen, but it reduces the amount of reflection that you see in my glasses. If you need to add lighting, maybe something like this. If I put that over there and point it at myself, I've got a much brighter light available to me and it's still off camera. It's a little distracting having it shine in my eyes and it puts a little shine on my forehead, but you'll need to experiment to get the lighting in your situation right. In our next video, we'll focus on preparations for getting the sound right.